Hi everybody, how's it going today? I'm uh, hauling some straw here today. Had a, a friend of mine called me yesterday afternoon or yesterday evening and he asked if we'd be interested in uh, a few loads of straw. He had three loads left on his field here that somebody was supposed to pick up but they didn't need him or didn't want them anymore and asked if we'd be interested in them. So I told him we'd take them. Uh, we can always use them, I guess. We'll use them at some point. So I'm just here with uh, our 942 up there and then our, our, 94, or, yeah, our 914 payloader. But I thought I'd kind of show you guys this. So we're about uh, 15 to 20 miles west of the dairy and where we are here, we're kind of in the hills. So it's quite a bit different landscape than where, uh, where our farm is. So I had to come down this hill here and then go back up the hill to the far side where those hay bales are. I'm not sure if you guys can see that on the camera. That's the way out of this field. So, yeah, quite a, a big change in elevation from where our farm is to where we are now. But it's a kind of nice landscape here. A lot of wildlife. I uh, thought I'd show you guys this. Uh, I'll maybe do a little bit of filming on the way out of here. and show you guys how how uh, steep some of these hills are they've uh, they've started to do some field work here saw some planters going in some uh, air seeders in this area a few started uh, right around us but it's our fields are a little too wet to yet to go out with the manure spreader you can see that they they spread fertilizer on this and uh, came through with the cultivator already and he's He's wanting to have these bales out of here before they come here and seed this field, so we'll try to get that done today. I put the duels on the 942 already, ready to go for manure spreading. We don't uh, really need them for this, but I didn't want to take them off again for just uh, three loads of straw. So I guess they're going to help with traction going down these hills. This is quite a downhill uh, driveway here, if you can call it that. There isn't really a good access point to this part of the field. We have to go through a uh, kind of a waterway here and then go back up the, uh, the field there to get to the road. It's a little soft on the bottom there. Uh, went through it going this way fine. They went through with the tractor and cultivator also. So we'll see. Hopefully we don't sink in too much with the trailer. We'll just take it slow. So far, no issues. If it was a full load of hay, I'd be a little bit more worried. Straw is not that heavy, so made it uh, through there fairly easily. Just uh, climbing this hill here. No. So we we had a, just a sprinkling of rain here, so. I don't have, uh, I can kind of feel it that it's a little bit, uh, I don't quite have the traction like I would if it was dry, but we're making it up here fine, it looks like. That's kind of a tight turn out of, our, out of this field also. Not a lot of room to work with. Kind of a narrow approach here to get out of this field and the road is not the widest either. Just make it. So this is the second load. I've uh, hauled one load out of here already. So I wasn't as nervous that time as I was the first time, but 
still it's a pretty tight turn with this long trailer. So now we're, we have, uh, yeah, probably, uh, I think it was about 16 or 16 to 18 miles uh, over the road. It's not a straight shot back. In the first uh, five, six miles, it's uh, pretty hilly. Just coming up on a big hill here again, uh, going right back downhill. So uh, most uh, newer Fent tractors are at least the 700, 800, 900. I believe 1000 series. They all have uh, an air system on it, on the tractor, so they they have air brakes. And this uh, this trailer that we have here also has air brakes. So we've we've got the air brakes hooked up to uh, to help slow us down going down these uh, big hills. And it's it's nice to have that uh, little bit of insurance and all that if you have to slam on the brakes that trailer will uh, help slow you down too, that it's not just going to push you around. These tractors handle pretty well on the road, but you still want to be, uh, be pretty careful going up and down these hills, that you uh, always stay in control. They were spreading fertilizer on this field to my left here and uh, it's been uh, cultivated now already. You can see the cultivator down by those uh, grain bins down there if you guys can uh, pick that up. Uh, off in the far distance I see a couple more fertilizer spreaders going. So there's uh, yeah, definitely getting to be a lot of activity in the fields out here. Uh, even back by us, there's some, some guys are going on the drier fields that they're able to go on. It, uh, yeah, we, we really need a good uh, couple weeks of dry weather. It'd be nice uh, to have that at this point. But it looks like we have a pretty good chance of rain here Thursday into Friday. Hopefully we don't get too much out of that one, but I've said that a couple times already, I feel like. We were just on the other side of these hills here to my right. Um, uh, yeah, right on the other side of those uh, woods up there about two three miles uh, straight east from or straight west from where we are here but uh, obviously there's no road straight across so we have to make our way around it is about a I don't know two two and a half hour round trip uh, to get these bales for every load so it uh, does take a little bit to, if there would have been a, a lot of loads out here I don't know if I don't know if we would have taken all of them, but three loads, it's doable. We can get that done here in, uh, in an afternoon. So now we'll just uh, make our way back to the dairy. So we got we have a straight shot here for uh, four or five miles or so. And then we'll get to a paved road. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll probably meet you back at the dairy. We're about uh, four miles away from the farm and it looks like somebody is picking up a piece of equipment here and they decided to unhook their trailer in the middle of the road and load it here. Hopefully they're going to load it right away otherwise I could be here a while. So it's about uh, three quarters of a mile back that I would have to drive in reverse with this trailer if I have to go around and take another route which, which I really don't want to do. So for now, I guess we'll just uh, sit here and wait. We just left the field here with the last load. It's uh, just a partial load. We ended up with 85 bales total, two full loads and one partial load. Sam is with me here to get this last load, so he'll take the payloader back to the farm and I'll take the tractor and the bales. So we'll end up using these bales for bedding, uh, more than likely we'll just use them on our, to, to bed our heifers. So we'll uh, yeah, head back to the dairy now. We're, uh, we're also testing uh, uh, each individual cow's milk today, we're taking samples from each individual cow. So when we get back, if I have time, I'll, uh, I'd like to show you guys that. So uh, once every month, uh, was always every 
first Tuesday of the month now. It's, they changed it every third Tuesday. I can work better with their schedule. So they, uh, Byron is the is the guy that uh, always comes and does that. And he'll he'll bring somebody with him to help him take samples. So they'll have their meters in the basement underneath our milking parlor, and they'll uh, collect. Uh, a sample of each individual cow, a milk sample of each individual cow, and they'll also uh, record the amount of pounds that each individual cow produces, and they have uh, very accurate meters. So we, we do that for a few reasons, that we, we can see what uh, each individual cow's uh, uh, milk components are, so their butter fat protein. We can also see each individual cow's somatic cell count. And we can also see their individual milk production of, the, of each cow in our herd, in our milking herd. So we use that, those records for uh, a few different things. Uh, I talked about some of them in the past in our uh, video where I talked about our genetics. So we, we use some of that information to decide which of our cows get bred to beef. So we also use that information to decide which cows that we uh, want to sell, so which ones are core producing cows. When we get back to the farm, if I have time to uh, uh, get some footage of uh, the milk testing, I'll do that. So they, we usually test from uh, in the afternoon, so they get here uh, before lunch, they hook their equipment up, it runs through the wash cycle with the rest of our equipment. Go through the milking from about 1 p.m. to about 8-ish uh, p.m. So they'll record each cow milking once. And uh, that's how we collect the samples and get the, the milk yield uh, data. It was a little bit cloudy and rainy here this morning, but it's turned into a nice day. So this meter here, this is their meter. Hopefully you guys can hear me because it's kind of loud down here. Put these meters in. Um, this is our meter right here, which is not uh, very accurate. But the way this works is that as the cow is milking, it takes a percentage of milk and puts it into this jar. And then they'll take their uh, milk sample once the cow is finished out of there, and that'll be a representative sample of the cow's entire milk for that milking. And then it'll show on the side how many pounds she produced. And then that will give us uh, a good reading on how much uh, that cow is producing daily. So what, one of them will be upstairs, because Byron usually does that. They'll go along the line of cows and uh, mark their numbers down in a, a handheld uh, computer he has around his neck. And then he'll come down here and he'll follow that line of cows again and put in the amount of pounds they produce and they'll mark the sample bottle with the cow's number. So these on the left here, and most of them are still milking now. The ones on the right that they're, they're pulling samples out of in uh, little sample jars. So these are the sample jars. You can see that they're all numbered. The number correlates with a number that Byron puts in his uh, little computer there. And that's, that's how we know okay, which sample is in which cow and how much they all produce. So you can see he's going along the front here where the cows are standing. And he's putting uh, each cow's number into his little computer there. And he'll do that for every line of cows that comes through our parlor. So we'll go this side, then I'll go to the north side and get those cows numbers, and then I'll go back downstairs. So he, he goes up and down the stairs a lot during the, the afternoon here. So that was Byron right there. He's been uh, coming to our farm for quite a few years now, testing our cows, and he, he actually comes from Wisconsin. So he comes all the way from Wisconsin over here to North Dakota to, to test our cows, and I. I believe he uh, goes to a few dairies in Minnesota as well, in the Wisconsin obviously, and I think he even gets into Colorado. So he, uh, he gets to see a lot of dairies uh, throughout uh, his work. But 
yeah he's yeah like i said he's been coming here a long time uh always worked good for us and uh yeah i think i'll uh, end this video here appreciate you guys watching and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next one i i should mention uh every time he's been coming here lately he's been asking for gouda cheese so i think that's probably a good sign if uh, somebody from wisconsin is uh, getting their cheese out of north dakota